Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Target 100 in Mathematics by Shivesh Kumar Singh and in this video we are going to learn about a topic complex number. Okay, let's start that lesson. See, first of all we'll discuss why we are going to learn about complex numbers. Though we know everything about real numbers, so what is the need of this? For example, you see, if I ask you one question that what will be the value of square root of 4? So simply you will say 2, yes? If I ask the same question like what will be the square root of minus 4, maybe some of you will say it is minus 2, okay. I am sure it is wrong but uh, you know this thing, okay. But why you can get this answer and you can check with your friends also. First you ask them this question that is square root of 4 is equal to what? Definitely they will say 2, okay. Some of you will say plus minus 2, that's also okay. But here they will say for square root of minus 4, definitely some of the students will say minus 2, okay. Now my question is why square root of 4 is equal to 2? This is why, okay. So here it's a simple reason that as square of 2 is equal to 4, yes. Square of 2 will be equal to 4, so square root of 4 is equal to 2. But here if you see, if you say that square root of minus 4 is equal to minus 2, but if you do the square of minus 2, will it be equal to minus 4? No, it will not be equal, yes. So it means square root of minus 4 will not be equal to minus 2, okay. In fact, square root of any negative real number will not be real. Real means you have studied in the real numbers that any number which can be represented on the number line is called a real number 0, 1, 2, 3, minus 1 like that. Okay. So any rational, irrational, any number whatever you can represent on number line is called real number. So when square root of any negative number is not real, it means we cannot represent it on number line then where we will represent it that we'll discuss in uh, later in this video okay now first of all we are going to introduce another word for you and that will be called iota okay so what is the meaning of iota it's a just smallest number for square root of negative number it's just a denotion only that is square root of minus one is called iota and we write it by the letter small i okay i is the denotion for square root of minus 1 now if i is equal to square root of minus 1 then easily you can understand that what will be the value of i square it will be equal to square root of minus 1 and what it will be did you say plus 1 no it will be equal to minus 1 so value of i square is minus 1 Similarly, if you have to find value of i cube means i to the power 3, so it will be i square times i means it will be equal to minus i. And if you have to find the value of i to the power 4, so it can be written as i square into i square means minus 1 times minus 1 and it will be equal to plus 1. Okay. Now, these are some basic values of y. In short, I'm just all the, I'm, I'm writing all the values here together so that you can memorize it. i is equal to under root minus 1, that is fixed. Okay, this value I have written here. i is equal to square root of minus 1. What will be the value of i square? It was minus 1. Value of i cube, it was minus i. And value of i to the power 4 is equal to 1. Just remember these values, okay? And these values will help you to solve so many questions. For example, if you have to find i raised to the power 15, then how you will find it? I will prefer to divide the power if it is greater than 4, then divide it by 4, okay? So if you will divide 15 by 4, then by using division algorithm, you can write 15 like this, 4 times 3 plus 3, yes or no? Please write in the comment if you have any problem in any calculation. So 4 times 3, 12 and 12 plus 3, 15. Now this is equal to i raised to the power 4 times 3 times i to the power 3. What property I used here? Please pause the video and try to write the property in the comment. Property was a to the power b times a to the power c is equal to a to the power b plus c. What you have learned in powers and exponents, okay? Now, using some property, using another property of powers and exponent, it can be written as 
i to the power 4 to the whole power 3 times i cube. What property I have used here? a to the power b to the whole power c is equal to a to the power bc. Okay. Now i raised to the power 4 value is 1. 1 to the power 3 times value of i cube is minus i and 1 to the power any number is equal to 1 and 1 times minus i means minus i and this is the answer. Okay. Now, some of you can say that, uh, sir, we can use here i square also. We can use i to the power 2 as well. 15 can also be written as 2 times 7 plus 1. Yes. Yes, you can write like this. But in that case, you will have to understand an, another thing also. That what is that thing? If you have minus 1 to the power even number, then it will be plus 1. And if you have minus 1 to the power odd number, then it will be equal to minus 1. Okay. So just to avoid this confusion, maybe by chance, uh, I'm not saying that you don't know this thing, but by chance, maybe by mistake, you write like this and then question will be wrong. So I prefer to write with power 4. Okay. Because value of i to the power 4 is 1 and 1 to the power any number will be always equal to 1. Okay. Similarly, if we want to solve this question, for example, say I have to find value of i raised to the power minus 37. Okay. So how we are going to do this? First of all, we will try to make this negative power as positive. And how you will do this thing? We can write it as 1 over i raised to the power 37. Now what property I used here? a raised to the power minus b is equal to 1 over a raised to the power b. Okay. Now as usual we will do will write this i raised to the power 37. We'll write 37 as factor of 4. So it will be 4 times how much? 9, 4 nines are 36, 1 left, so plus 1. Okay. Now it can be written as 1 over i raised to the power 4 multiply 9 times i using the same property as I have told you before a to the power b times a to the power c is equal to a to the power b plus c. Okay. Now, 1 over i raised to the power 4 to the whole power 9 times i using some this property a to the power b to the whole power c is equal to a to the power b c. Okay. My dear students, I'll prefer to write the property like this again and again. Okay, because it is not because of this just one question. You will memorize this property also. Okay, now i raised to the power 4 is 1. So 1 to the power 9 times i means 1 over i. Okay, but in complex number we don't want to see this i in denominator. So what you can do here? You can multiply numerator and denominator by i. Okay, it is similar to like uh, rationalization what you do with the real numbers. So this is i over i multiply i means i square and what is the value of i square minus 1. So its answer will be minus i. Like this you can solve the question. Okay. Not only with the single term you can do with more than one term of i. Like for example if you have to do i raised to the power 10 plus i raised to the power 15. So what you can do here you can write i raised to the power 10 as 4 multiply 2 plus 2 plus i raised to the power 15 means or you can take common also whatever you want you can do and 4 multiply 3 plus 3 okay just check the calculation please 4 multiply 2 means 2, two uh, sorry 4 multiply 2 is 8 8 plus 2 is 10 and 4 multiply 3 is 12 and 12 plus 3 15 so it will be i raised to the power 4 to the whole power 2 times i square plus i raised to the power 3, 4 times power 3 times i raised to the power 3. And it will be 1 square, value of i square is minus 1, plus i to the power 4 is 1 to the power 3, and i cube is minus i. So it is equal to minus 1 minus i. This will be your answer. Okay, like this you can solve the question. I am sure you understand this calculation for i. Okay, now... We will see what is the meaning of complex number. That was all about uh, iota. Now, what is the meaning of complex number? So, you have seen that any number which is not real, it will be called 
imaginary number okay when it doesn't exist in reality then it will be in the imagination so it will be called imaginary number okay so any number in the form of any number in the form of a plus i b where a and b are real numbers and a and b are real numbers and it is written by z that i will write after okay a is called real part and b is called imaginary part okay now what are these two things just try to understand real part means the number without i is called real part okay in our daily life also we say that whatever friend you will make in your life you will become like that so a is alone he has no friend with no friendship with i so a is called real part b is a real number see this line a and b both are real numbers but b is associated with i b has a friendship with i so b has become imaginary part okay now normally we denote any complex number by the small letter z so z is equal to a plus ib is the general complex number okay now here you need to understand two important thing that if a is equal to 0 now just try to imagine this thing if a is equal to 0 then this term will vanish from here you will have only this term left yes or no ib means only the number written with the complex imaginary part will be left so that will be called z will be purely imaginary it will be purely imaginary okay because we are left with only imaginary part now it's opposite if b is equal to 0 then this term will be removed yes and you will be left with only a that is the real number so z will be called purely real number okay like this you can do the question and you can understand it this thing very important very easy thing also see for example they can say uh, for what values of x and y the number y minus 2i the number will be purely real purely real so for purely real that imaginary part should be vanished it should be removed so y minus 2 should be 0 so it means y should be equal to 2 and if you have to find purely imaginary then what you can do here then real part should be vanished means x minus 1 should be 0 so x should be equal to 1 like this you can solve easy easy questions okay maybe expressions will be difficult but concept will remain same so purely imaginary number means real part will be zero means a will be zero and purely imaginary means uh, i think i have written here purely uh, if b is equal to zero then it is purely real okay like this okay please correct this thing okay now so this is the basic thing about the complex number now another thing is argand plane what is that argand plane see i told you that these are the imaginary numbers so when it is imaginary then we cannot draw it on the real number or graph paper but just to study only if you have z is equal to a plus ib be any complex number then we consider this point as a b okay a b is the point representing z is equal to a plus i b and a and b both are real numbers i told you so when it is a real number then we can draw it on the graph paper this is x axis this is y axis here x negative and here y negative okay now i'm just taking this example like this is the point a b okay so this type of graph graph used for the complex number is called argand plane okay like this you can study these things so i am sure you understood this basic thing of complex number and especially that questions related with the iota okay don't uh, don't forget to see my other videos please for uh, topics related with the complex numbers and if you think that such videos will help you to increase the knowledge then please like and subscribe my channel and share with your friends also thank you